Do you want that After Effects trending zoom and shake effect? Well, let's do it in Filmora. Well, the first thing, of course, right here is to drag down the audio that you are going to use for this trending zoom and shake effect. There are a couple of songs that are being used for this trend, but I think I will go with this song that you are hearing right now. And then before I go further, I will go right here on the profile project settings and then change my project resolution to one is to one, which is the Instagram preset. And now, of course, right here, you need to right select the audio in the timeline and then use this option right here for automatic bit detection. And this is just the procedure whereby Filmora is automatically marking the bits on this audio for me. And now that all the bits are marked, it's time to take down all the videos that I am going to use for this edit. And then I'll just make sure that I adjust all of them to fit according to the markers, which is according to the beats. Now let's start with creating the zoom effect. To do this, select the clip, go to the crop tool, and switch over to the pan and zoom section. You'll see two boxes here labeled start and end. These two boxes will control the zoom in and zoom out effects. Then, change the aspect ratio to custom so we can adjust it freely. Then, resize the end box to the zoom level you want. And make sure to keep the same aspect ratio for both boxes. Next, position the end box over the part of the video that you want to zoom in on and then click play to preview how it looks. If you want the make it zoom out look, just click the swap button right here to reverse the start and end positions. Once you're happy with it, click apply to finalize the zoom effect. Now, if you want to apply this zoom effect to other clips without doing each one manually, right click on the layer with the zoom effect, go to effects and filters and select copy effect. Then select all the other clips, right click, go to effects and filters again and choose paste effect. Now, all of your clips should have the same zoom effect. If you need to adjust the zoom position on individual clips, just return to the crop tool and adjust the end box's position until it looks right for each one. Once the zoom effect is set, let's add a blur effect to give it a smoother look. Go to the effects tab, select video effects, and choose blur and find the dispersion blur effect. Add it to the timeline on top of your clip, making sure it's long enough to cover the clip duration. Let's adjust the settings now. First, change the blur type to 1, which will give it a standard blur effect. Next, adjust the clarity radius to around 0.2 and leave the blur radius at its default setting. To animate the blur, set a keyframe and blur intensity at the start of the clip with a value of 10, and then go to the end of the clip and bring it down to 1. This gradual change in blur intensity will create a smooth transition in the zoom effect. Then you may want to repeat this for other clips. And you can also adjust the X and Y coordinates to change the blur's center point. For example, if you want to focus on a specific part of the video, such as a face, you can shift the center point to highlight that area. Adjusting the blur center point allows for more creative control. Now that we've covered the zoom effect, let's move on to creating the effect. Go to the Effects tab, then select Video Effects. Find Shake and choose Gunshot Shake. Drop this effect onto the timeline and adjust its length to match the clip. In the settings, increase the speed to 100 to make the shake faster. This effect will give a subtle shake to your video. But for more intensity, we can use the extreme shake effect. So I add it to the timeline, then take a seven frame section of the extreme shake effect. To start with the Y shake, bring down position X to zero and raise position Y to one. Now go to the start of the clip and set a keyframe for position Y. Then go to the end of the clip and bring it back down to zero. After that, turn off RGB separate to avoid color distortion and enable motion blur for a smoother look, then increase the frequency to around 400 for a stronger shake effect. If you want, you can also add blur effect to make the shake look even smoother. 
So go to the Effects tab, select Blur, then select Direction Blur, and add it to the timeline. Then take a 7-frame section of this effect as well. Then set the direction to 90 degrees and increase the blur strength to 30. Then I add several copies of this layer. Alright, now we know how to make a Y shake effect, so let's move on to the last part. The X shake effect, aka horizontal shake effect. For the X shake, copy the Y shake effect layers you just created. Now, in the effect settings, delete all the position Y keyframes and set its value to 0. Then increase position X to 1. Create a keyframe and bring this keyframe to start. Then go to the end and bring position X back to 0. This creates a horizontal shake effect. Since the horizontal shake can look more intense, so you can adjust the frequency down to about 50 for a smoother movement. Then I copy this layer a few times like this. And here's the X shake effect. And that's it. You now have an After Effects style shake effect using Filmora. Subscribe and share to your dear friends. And until I meet you in the next episode, peace.